Hi.NET friends, my name's Steve Gordon. I'm a Microsoft MVP and Pluralsight author. In this video, I want to spend a few minutes just explaining the process to upgrade an ASP.NET Core 3.1 project to ASP.NET Core 5.0 Preview 1. This is the very first preview. There's a long way to go until we get to the final release in November. So this isn't for production use, but still an interesting exercise. If you'd like to follow along with the written steps and code samples, you can find those on my blog, stevejgordon.co.uk. Hopefully you'll enjoy this content. If you do, please do leave a like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel. And with that, let's get started. In the next 11 minutes or so of this demo, we'll focus on the following steps. First, we'll install the required prerequisites. In my case, I'll install the .NET 5 Preview SDK, and I'll install a preview version of the latest Visual Studio release, which has support for .NET 5. Then we'll upgrade a solution containing some ASP.NET Core 3.1 projects to target ASP.NET Core 5 and .NET 5. We'll conclude by upgrading an XUnit-based unit test project. I want to warn you again that this is still an early first preview release of .NET 5, so this content is only current as of mid-March 2020. I'm taking these steps on a sample project to test the experience and the steps required. There have been limited changes in this first preview, mostly bug fixes and some small initial features. Future previews will likely contain more breaking changes, so don't attempt this in production. With that caution, let's jump into the steps that we need to complete. The first thing I'm going to do is to download the .NET 5 Preview 1 SDK onto my PC. I can visit the .NET 5 download page to get the Software Development Kit, or SDK for short. You can get to this page by visiting .NET.Microsoft.com forward slash download forward slash .NET dash core forward slash 5.0. If I scroll down a little, I can see two download columns. On the left is the SDK download, which I need as I'll be developing .NET Core applications. On the right is an option to download the runtime only, which is typically what you'll install on a server, for example. I'm on a Windows PC here, so I'll download the x64 version of the Windows installer for the SDK. The download begins in my browser. Once the download completes, I can click on the downloaded installer to start the installation. I'll click on the install button here to get things going. The installation takes about one minute on my PC, which I've sped up here so that you don't get too bored. The summary screen confirms that the installation was successful and I can now close the SDK installer. To prove that this worked, I'll switch to a command prompt where I can use the .NET CLI to run commands. I'll issue the .NET dash dash info command here which lists the installed SDKs and runtimes. The output will vary depending on what you've got installed on your PC. From my output, I can confirm that the runtimes installed in my PC include the new .NET 5 Preview 1 runtime. Scrolling up, the latest SDK version is 5.0.100 Preview 1. Great. Next, I'm going to install the first preview of Visual Studio version 16.6, which has support for .NET 5 projects. This step isn't absolutely required, and you may choose to edit the files in an editor such as VS Code. I need first to download the installer, which includes Visual Studio 16.6. .6. I can do this by visiting the release notes page for Visual Studio at docs.microsoft.com forward slash en us forward slash Visual Studio forward slash releases forward slash 2019 forward slash release dash notes dash preview. That's quite a mouthful, so I'll include a link for this in the description for the video. I'll download the preview version of the professional edition, which is sufficient for me right now. In fact, the community edition would also be a perfectly suitable choice. While the download begins, the webpage wants me to sign up for some helpful tips. I'm not gonna do that here, but feel free to do so. Now that the installer has downloaded, I'll run it. I'll click continue on this first screen here, and a few things will download. We're now at the workload selection screen, which you can customize for your installation needs as required. I'm going to select the ASP.NET and web development workload, and also the .NET Core cross-platform development workload. 
That's all I need right now, so I'll click to start the install. I've completed this survey on another PC, so I'll skip that here. Do fill this out if you can to help the team improve the product. The installer will now download and install the various required components. This does take a few minutes, so I'll skip through to the end of this step. Okay, with that complete, I now have the general availability version of 16.5 installed, but also the 16.6 .6 Preview 1 version installed side by side. In some situations, you may be required to perform a reboot after this installation. I now have all of the prerequisites installed, so let's move on to the project upgrade steps. The sample solution I'm going to upgrade is currently an ASP.NET Core 3.1 application with a corresponding ASP.NET Core 3.1 web API. Here's my solution inside Windows Explorer. I'll right click on my tennis booking solution file and from the open with menu, I'll opt to use Visual Studio 2019 preview. There are three projects in this solution which we'll tackle in turn. The first simulates an external API which provides weather data. I can double click on the project to open the SDK project file. Since this API is pretty straightforward, it has no dependencies besides the ASP.NET Core libraries, which are included since the project targets the web SDK. To upgrade this project then, all I need to do is change the target framework from NetCore App 3.1 to NetCore App 5.0. As a point of note, it's no longer required that I specify the Lang version to set this project to use C-Sharp 8. That's a legacy from when this project previously targeted .NET Core 2.1. Since .NET Core 3, the default is that C-Sharp 8 features are available. I haven't removed it here from this file, but I could now delete that line. I can save the file and the upgrade's complete. I'll build the project to confirm that that works. Good, pretty straightforward. The next project I'll upgrade is a little more involved as it's the main web application. When I open this project file, you can see it has quite a few extra package reference dependencies. As before, I'll update the target framework first to NetCore App 5.0. For the Microsoft package references, I know that many of these need to target the 5.0 pre-release packages to get the ASP.NET Core and Entity Framework Core versions. The ASP.NET Core announcement blog post includes details of the pre-release versions that we should use here. I'll copy that version number and as instructed by the blog post, I'll use it to set the version for all of the Microsoft ASP.NET Core packages. I have free to update in this sample. Next, I'm also going to update Entity Framework Core to the 5.0 previews. Again, details of the specific versions I need to use here are included in the Entity Framework Core announcement blog post. Here, the available version is actually for preview two. I can copy that and paste it in as the version for the two Entity Framework Core packages here. That's the required package references upgraded, so I can now save this and build the project. Let me validate that everything still loads by running the application. The homepage still loads and it includes the data from the Weather API project as well. To validate that the database connectivity via Entity Framework Core is working, I'll simply log in as the administrator. That works fine too, so that's good news. For now, since this first preview of ASP.NET Core 5.0 doesn't really include any significant changes, none of my existing code breaks. In future releases, that may well change. To illustrate the remaining issue, I'll build the entire solution. After that completes, I can see a build error from the test project. This problem occurs because I've not upgraded the test project, so it's still targeting 3.1, and that's not compatible with the upgraded web application. To fix that, I'll upgrade the unit test project now. In this case, again, there's no reference packages to upgrade, so I just need to set the target framework once again to NetCore App 5.0. I'll see if that builds now, and indeed it does. The build error has gone. I'll run the unit test from the test explorer. Looking at the test output, there's an error here where the 5.0 version of the Microsoft.ASP.NETCore.app meta package can't be found, but I'm expecting that to be located via the SDK mechanism here. If I switch over to a command prompt at the directory for this test project, I'll try running the test using the .NET test CLI command. Those seem to run and pass successfully. After showing details of my experience here with the Visual Studio team, the problem was explained to me. The SDK installer I used was x64, which means that the x86 packages are not included by default. 
Tests in Visual Studio, therefore, need to run under the matching x64 architecture. I've since gone back and checked, and indeed my test was set to run as x86, hence the correct package could not be located. After changing the test run architecture to auto, the test indeed ran as expected in Visual Studio. For now, that concludes the steps that I'm required to take to upgrade this free project solution to the preview of ASP.NET Core and .NET Core 5.0. As a reminder, we first installed the .NET 5 Preview 1 SDK. Next, we installed a preview of the latest version of Visual Studio 2019. And finally, we upgraded the free projects to target .NET Core App 5.0. In the case of the main web application, we were also required to update some package references to the latest preview releases. I'll conclude with a final reminder that it is very early days and this is simply an initial first preview. Don't go and upgrade any important projects for now. Thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed this content, please do subscribe to the channel. I hope to produce more. If you're able to help support me in producing and releasing more content, I do have a Patreon option and an option to buy me a coffee in the links below. I also have many posts about .NET, ASP.NET Core, and related topics available on my blog, stevejgordon.co.uk. If you'd like, you can follow me on Twitter, where I'm at Steve J. Gordon, for updates about all of my content and the world of .NET. Finally, I have courses about ASP.NET Core and .NET Core on the amazing Pluralsight platform. For your convenience, I'll include links to all of these things in the description below. Thanks again and I really hope you'll join me again soon.